Okay, here we go. Match number one between White Ra and Dimaga. A Protoss versus Zerg. It's the StarCraft World IT King of the Hill. And this match is going to be awesome. White Ra defeated Tyson last week. He was able to take the title of the King of the Hill. And now he is facing Dimaga. We have the first map. It's Taldrim Altar. At the top left, we can see the Protoss player spawning. The Ukrainian Protoss in red. And at the bottom left, we see Dimaga, the Zerg player. And Dimaga had a really hard time lately. White Ra was on top of his game, was defeating everyone, uh, anyone he, he faced. And this is going to be quite an epic match. I love the matchup because uh, Zerg is my, my own race. So I really love to see a Zerg player just trying to defeat one of the best protos out there. As you can see, White Ray immediately went with that pylon at the choke, so he might go for a, a Nexus first opening or a Forge first opening. He's scouting with this probe in the meantime, and if he goes for a Forge first, he should send the second probe out once again to scout to the bottom left, because uh, that way you will be safe if your Zerg opponent is going to play an early pool. You will be able to wall off, and that's really, really important. Dimaga is going for a 14 pool right now, whereas uh, White Ray is just getting additional probes the whole time and is now moving towards the pylon with his probe. He's probably going to place down that forge and he's immediately sending out that second probe as a scout again. So that's exactly the thing that I was talking about. If he sends out the second probe as well, he will scout an early pool just in time to wall off completely and to fend off any incoming zerglings. As you can see, that probe will discover the main base of Dimaga fairly soon, and the Zerg player is going for a standard play. He's not getting gas right now, he's just sort of focusing on his economy, focusing on his drones, and will get a hatch pretty soon as well. It's fairly risky to play a hatch first against a Protoss player, especially on a map like Taldrim Altar, because usually you can expect the Protoss player to play with the Forge first play. And on a map like Taldrim, if the Protoss plays with the Forge first, he can uh, kill you quite easily if you go for a hatch first play. He can either just try to wall off here with three pylons and put cannons behind it. That's one way to do it. Another way, of course, is to try to build the cannons behind the mineral patches. And what you can do as well is as soon as you scout your opponent, by the way, the pro gets chased off by the zerglings, as you can see, you can just place one of the pylons down there, add a cannon at the bottom and another cannon on top of the cliff. That's a really annoying strategy for the zerg player to deal with. And uh, White Raw obviously is not doing that because Dimaga didn't go for that hatch first for good reason. He went for a pool first and placed the hatch after the pool without gas. Getting the queen right now, whereas, Dima uh, whereas White Ra is now getting his uh, gateway. And of course, the Zergling of Dimaga already scouted the whole thing, knows about the cannon, the forge, and the gateway as well. And the Nexus is nearly finished. A little bit faster than the expansion of the Zerg player. And now, once again, he's trying to chase off that probe. Whereas in the main base, the Queen is already using Inject Lava for this uh, second time. There's a second Queen coming up as well. There's no gas just yet. So, so far, he's playing without gas at all, which I uh, find quite curious. It looks a little bit like uh, the builds that made Spanishiwa pretty famous, but so far he's not getting that third queen. He doesn't have enough minerals. He's just focusing on drones, 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 drones. He has 24 already against 23 probes. He's using all his minerals, all his minerals, all of them for drones. As you can see, another overlord and the drones, and he's spreading creep like crazy as well, focusing on that creep spread. I li really like that quite a lot. The second queen is already injecting again and now trying to fend off that probe that's scouting into the main base, not able to do so though. And as you can see, 27 drones so far. He only has four Zerglings out on the field. Is trying to get those Selnaga Watchtowers, which he already did. In the meantime, we have uh, the another hatchery. He's going for another in-base hatch, a macro hatch right now, in order to get more lava, to get additional lava. I like that quite a lot. He knows about the uh, um, yeah, he knows about everything that his opponent is doing. He knows about the cybernetics core. He knows about the gateway technology, the warp gate technology that's just been researched, and of course that overlord is in a really good position to scout everything that's happening in at the wall of 
of white run. The Maga probably now losing that Overlord. No, actually, I think the Overlord will be able to escape and is getting another hatch right away, whereas the Ma whereas white run is getting the Stargate and his first Stalker. So the Maga really focusing on his economy right now, building four hatches before he gets any units at all and more drones incoming. That's 39 drones for you right there. Two queens, a third queen coming up as well as an evolution chamber. And in the meantime, the Protoss player is chrono boosting the shit out of his Nexus as well. Tries to get an even work account with his opponent. There's one Stargate already. The Void Ray is chrono boosted and will be out on the field fairly soon. And the Maga with four hatches, with three bases. This is actually pretty, pretty funny. We have uh, his attack already. He took gas. In the meanwhile time, he took gas. He has 47 drones against 41 probes. And as you can see, there are two spore crawlers in production already as well. We have a metabolic boost for the Zerglings. And that Overlord still feeling really, really lucky. He escaped the attack of the Sentry and the Stalker. But now the Void Ray is probably going to finish it. Yep, there's the first Zergling, and now the Overlord is in a really bad spot as the Void Ray is taking out for sure. Well, we have uh, additional air units for White Ra. White Ra is now trying to get Phoenixes. Is also starting a new tech. Is going for the robotics facility right now, adding more gates, getting that upgrade for his uh, gateway units. And Dimaga feeling pretty comfortable right now. He's a player that really likes the macro game, and he's showing that once again right now. That spine crawler, a uh, spore crawler, will be in a lot of trouble though. But the queen is ready. A second spore crawler trying to get into position with a reduced routing time. He is already able to fire at that void ray, and the queen is joined by a second one. We have two queens over there, one in the back, and of course all those drones. All those drones. Still he doesn't have any units at all, so he would be helpless again in any incoming attack by ground, but there's only that Void Ray on the field. 51 drones and a lot of spare minerals for the Maga right now. He's getting 8 additional drones, now getting the Hydralis 10 and the plus 1 attack upgrade for his range units. He has a lot of economy at his 3rd base as well. As you can see, the income mineral-wise is nearly the same in terms of gas. The Maga is slightly ahead, now trying to um, spread his creep a little bit further. We have two Phoenixes for his opponent as well as a third one coming right now. And of course, White Rai is also trying to get that Nexus, trying to get a third base and is getting additional attacks. Now, right now, he's going for the Robotics Bay while uh, White Rai is now just trying to attack. Well, maybe all those drones a little bit. Try to just take out one or two of them. They are light armored and therefore fall easy victim to the Phoenixes. As you can see, the Spore Crawler is in position already. We have one Overlord hovering at the right side of the map. And now, with the upgrade for the um, grooved spines so that they have additional range the hydralisks stream out of all those bases here's a lot of hydralisks already there are nine of them additional 12 coming up and this is quite a force to deal with of course uh, whitera does the right thing with adding colossus right now because colossus are just so good against uh, against Hydralis and that one observer already tells him that the Maga is about to push out of his base. He's trying to get the extended thermal lands upgrade and he really, he really needs to chrono boost that upgrade. That will be crucial. And White Rai is just now trying to delay that push of Dimaga because he wants to wait for that Extended Thermal Lens upgrade. The main thing about the Extended Thermal Lens upgrade is that if the Colossus don't have it, they are at the same range as the Hydra list, so the Hydras have an easy, easy um, time at taking out the Colossus. But as soon as Extended Thermal Lens is through, the range of the Colossi is upgraded by plus 3 is 9 instead of 6, and therefore the Hydra list don't stand a chance against a player that is able to macro his unit. And macro and micro, of course. Here we go, and the first force fields are being placed down. The Hydal is trying to get into position, and right now the Colossus is in range of the Hydralist immediately. It's taken out. The Colossus is already down and all those Hydralists deal a huge number, a huge amount of damage to his opponent. But Whitera is now lifting uh, half of the units off with this Graviton Beam, always trying to use his micro as best as he can. The Void Ray is already on 
six kills. He's getting kill after kill. The Maga Guni doing a good job with the transfusers, but it won't be enough. It won't be enough. Also, the reinforcements of the Zerg player just can't stand against that power of the Protoss player, reinforcing his army with additional stalkers. And now we have another Colossus trying to take out those Hydralisks. And he's able, he's able to repel that push of the Maga. Very well done by White Draw. Very good job. He killed 71 units and lost only 25 of them. Of course, his units are a lot more expensive than the units of the Zerg player, but at the resources lost hat, you can see that this push was quite expensive for the Ukrainian Zerg player. And Wydra now on three bases is trying to get his tech units, trying to get all those Colossus, trying to get additional Phoenixes, getting more upgrades, the armor upgrade for the ground units now as well as three additional gateways in order to warp in more units and in Margo with those hydralists they are already upgraded plus one attack is done and we have plus one armor on its way as well another base for the zerg player is being built right now he's trying to get that expansion at the bottom of the map and the observer is still scouting the movements of the zerg player's army we have the infestation pit coming up as well and he will probably try to get to get Neural Parasite against the Colossus, but that will be, well, that's quite a long time because now he's trying to attack again and Neural Parasite will take ages until it hits. So I don't think that he will be able to deal with that push of the of his opponent. The two boy grace are gone, but that's basically because all those Zerglings just die to the Colossus as do the, Zer as do the Zerg's Hydralisks. And Demaga in a really bad spot right now. He was trying to hit his opponent with a very well-timed timing attack with those Hydralists. But he didn't have enough units to withstand the power of the Protoss army. And now Wydra is on the move. He's ahead with 20 supply, roughly 20 supply. And he will be able to deal a huge amount of damage to the Zerg player if Demaga is not able to get additional units into the game. He's trying to, he's trying to get Hydralists once again. I'm not too sure if he should really stick to Hydras, if he shouldn't build a Roach Warren at least. Because that Pathon Glance upgrade will take ages until it's done. Then he has to build in fast as an of course, also to get Neural Parasite if he really wants to take out those Colossi. And now, now, Wydra has to move his units bane to the back. He has to move those Colossus. And two of them are already down, but the Stalkers on 1-1 one, one upgrades are killing every single Hydra. And we have 56 army supply against 24. He's at half the army supply of his opponent. And Wydra is making good use of that cliff. He's getting additional Stalkers, just warping in six additional stalkers and now the protoss player is just killing all those four crawlers as well as well that could have been that could have been dangerous to his void race and colossus as well the maga in a very very tough situation right now he's on 64 drones against 73 of course whitra has expanded as well he just got that expansion at the at the top and now, yeah, those last Hydralis won't stand a chance against the uh, Wydra. Oh, actually, they will. If the Protoss player is not using his Micro to retreat with the Colossus, the first one is already down. Then Imaga might be able to defend against that push, but he already lost a lot of time, uh, mining time. He lost a lot of units as well. 177 have been killed by his opponent so far. And now, now Wydra is trying to kill that hatchery, but once again the Hydra is move in and Wydra not realizing what's happening is losing another Colossus. Is moving, is moving up to the front with his, with his last Colossus getting bling. Now the plus two attack upgrade for his ground units. Another Colossus on his way as well. And there come additional Zealots. And once again, once again, the White Run not paying attention. He's occupied elsewhere. He's occupied in his main base. And now all oh, those links are actually, are actually really, really dangerous. They don't have the support of the Hydralist, but still they are able to deal a lot of damage, the damage to White Run. And they weren't that costly. Now let's have another look at the, uh, the resources lost tab. And there you can see that White Run only lost 10,000 10, resources, while the Zerg player already lost 16,000. He has a very, very good economy, but still, 
Um, those losses are really, really horrible to compensate, very hard to compensate. We have White Ryan DeMarca in the first match now of the King of the Hill by StarCraft World IT. And White Ryan is getting additional, additional Colossa, additional Void Rays and of course Stalkers. His units will be on two attack upgrades fairly soon. Blink is ready by now for the Stalkers. And now White Ryan just trying to take out the expansions of his opponent. He knows about three of the bases. He will know about the fourth one very well uh, very soon as well and here comes the zerg player moving out with that force he's still behind with 30 supply he has one one upgrades for his hydralis moving in no retreating just trying to fend off his opponent as you can see we have the infestors all the way no neural parasite upgrade as of yet Maybe, yeah, now he's going for it. Now he's going for the Neural Parasite upgrade, trying to take out those Colossi, and that would be huge. If he's able to Neural Parasite all of the Colossi, then the Hydralists will be in a very, very good position to deal with the Stalkers. Of course, there are also the Zerglings that will pressure the ranged units of, the, of his opponent. And Whitera, he is retreating. He is retreating once again. I actually don't know why. His economy is really, really good. He has a huge army and he should have been able to take out that fourth base. He should have attacked it very far earlier, um, to be honest. Maybe scouted with his observer. One of the Void Rays is now trying to kill another attempt of the Zerg player to establish a fifth base. And by now, as you can see, the army supply of the Marga is on 90 against 113. The uh, White Ray is once again trying to attack that position, the national expansion killing a lot of drones and now he's paying attention to those colossi taking out that hatchery taking out the hatchery getting another base himself getting a fifth base there are two or three zerglings just scouting and they are annihilated by the protoss players defenses getting the plus one attack upgrade for his void race now as well and here we go the fight is about to approach neural parasite is nearly done and Wydra, white race attacking Dimaga. neural parasite is done but he's not able to get any any neural parasite in at all he's just funneling his opponent and the army of the zerg players is getting demolished oh, all those Colossus and two attack upgrades are killing, are killing the low hit point units of the Zerg player, the Zerglings and the Hydralis. There is no way, no way for Dimaga to win this fight. He types GG, leaves the game, and the first match goes to White Rock. Dimaga against Whitera. This is going to be the second game. It's going to play, take place on Metalopolis, as you can see. And we have another Protoss versus Zerg. The King of the Hill, the best of five, sponsored by StarCraft World IT, organized by StarCraft World IT. Those guys are really awesome. And uh, here you can see uh, in, um, yeah, well, live just spamming the uh, URL as well. So make sure to check them out and have a look. There's a raffle on their page as well regarding uh, the King of the Hill. And the last match of Whitera against Dimaga was a little bit uh, strange, especially because Dimaga just stuck to his unit composition to Zerglings and Hydralis, even though he realized that uh, the army mix of Whitera was far too superior to his own. And in the end, he was trying to uh, get Neural Parasite into the mix as well in order to take out those Colossi. He was not able to do that. And yeah, well. White Ra basically just annihilated the force of the Protoss uh, of the Zerg player. Another factor was that Hydralis, of course, are really slow off creep, and this was not the best thing to happen for Dimaga. He had to fight off creep, he had to fight with Hydralisk and Zerglings against a huge amount of stalkers with good upgrades and of course the Colossi. The timing of attack of Dimaga with the Hydralisk didn't work out all that well. White Ra was able to defend against it, and therefore the Zerg player lost the initiative in the game and the game itself as well. As you can see, we have uh, a gate first for the Protoss player and here is White Rye. And immediately Dimaga is throwing down an expansion. Dimaga is getting an expansion, he's getting a hatch first, pretty risky. And as a, a reaction, an immediate reaction, White Ra is getting that forge. And now we might actually see exactly the thing I was talking about in Taldar Malta that is really, really risky to get an expansion, a hatch first against the Protoss player. So uh, exactly the 
that's exactly what I was talking about. Immediately after he saw that expansion, Whitera is throwing down that forge. She already has one gateway. And as you can see, now Dimaga is trying to get the spawning pool as well. And here are two, two pylons right away. What is Dimaga doing? Is he pulling drones? Yes, he is. He's pulling drones, trying to kill those pylons. In the meantime, Whitera is just sticking around with his probe. Three of the drones, no, none of the drones is actually trying to take out that probe. The first Zealot is already on its way. There are two, two probes right now. He's trying to get the first cannons up and running. Cannon number one is already is already being killed by the drone. Simaga doing a really good job at defending. But additional, additional photon cannons are being placed down. And Dimaga has to use all those. He has to use all of those, all of those drones and he's getting zerklings now as well he's getting zerklings and white drop hold a huge amount of probes getting that zealot but will he be able will he be able to defend against the links that are now trying to attack as well there's a second photo cannon being placed and will white drop being able to pull that off oh my god cannon number one is down will the second cannon be finished in time white drop trying to defend with probes with probes and zealot everything he has but the photo cannon is down Dimaga is actually able to defend against that cannon rush. Dimaga is able to defend against that cannon rush just in time. Bear <laughs> that was so close. That was really so damn close. And White Rob will lose those two partners as well, trying to wall off, but this will be next to impossible. He doesn't have enough minerals. He will lose that game. Dimaga is actually able to defend against that push and now streaming into his opponent's main base and taking out, trying to take out that Zalat. As soon as he's able to take out that cannon, the game is basically over. Another stream of Zerklings are now just running into, into White Rob's main base. There is no way the Proto Slayer can defeat him right now his cannons were up a little bit too late the marker with a beautiful defense actually able to take out pylon and all the cannons is taking game number two very very well played by Dimaga. white rat trying to punish the expansion first by the zerg player but he was not able to do so Dimaga with a beautiful play against that cannon rush gg Game number three, Shakura's Plateau, White Draw against the Maga. Yep, right now we have uh, the Protoss player at the bottom right of the map. And he lost the last map. He lost Metalopolis to Dimaga. Dimaga opening with a hatch first. Immediately re White Draw reacted by throwing down a forge, trying to punish the expansion attempt of his opponent, getting those two parlance at the... At, um, at the uh, uh, surroundings of the choke and just trying to place down his cannons as well. But Dimaga did a really an awesome job at defending against this cannon push. I must admit that I didn't like that placement of White Rust Pylon all that well. He should have used it behind the pylons, uh, behind the mineral line at the expansion in order to block the cannon off a little bit better. But still, pulling off uh, such a defense as Dimaga did takes a lot of skill. He used all, nearly all his drones and uh, zerklings as well. <laughs> in order to yeah, kill the cannons, kill the probes, kill the incoming zealot and of course the pylons. And after that, Wider just didn't have enough resources to close his uh, wall off and therefore Dimaga could just stream it to his main base with the Zerglings, take him out, take the second game and now the series is tied. It's a uh, best of five of course, it's the uh, StarCraft World IT King of the Hill. And Dimaga is going for a spawning pool this time. He's going for a spawning pool, whereas White Drop placed down his uh, pylon on top of that huge ramp right over there. So he's going for an, ex uh, an early expansion. Will probably throw down his forge first, especially when he sees the spawning pool of his opponent. And we have 15 to 15 supply right now. Dimaga starting at the top left of the map. Metalopolis, uh, sorry, Metalopolis was the last map. This is Shakira's Plateau. And Shakira's Plateau is, of course, a map where you can uh, once again start out with a Nexus first or a Forge first. Whitera is getting that Nexus before he places down the Forge at the 
top of that ramp. And he will be able to defend against any incoming attacks fairly easy. Dimaga has, uh, has two options in the end. He can either try to just attack with roaches and zerglings trying to bust his opponent, or he can expand himself, maybe get a third base um, fairly soon and try to out-macro White Ra. Those are the two options that he has, and Dimaga being uh, known for a macro player might try to get that third base very, very soon. Players like, for example, Nachio or Moro, they use that Baneling or Roach attack and uh, were quite successful with it. I remember that Red used to uh, use Baneling busts against Protoss player that used the Forge first play on that map, which is a really good strategy as long as the Protoss doesn't have uh, his, uh, well, doesn't have his first sentries out on the map because then he can just block the ramp with force fields. But let's have a look at what White Ra is uh, doing right now. In his main base, he's getting two gas already. His expansion is nearly done. That Ling is entering his base, though. No, he isn't. Yes, it is. And here we go, attacking the cannon. Bad idea. And dying. Uh, yes. You shouldn't attack cannons when if you are circling. <laughs> Dimaga with the TT just realized what his opponent is doing, that he's getting that nexus, that expansion, and that he wasn't able to stream uh, run into the main base with his circling. And Dimaga, of course, trying to get that third base. He's, get, uh, he's trying to get that third base. His expansion is already finished, so now he can harvest from two mineral lines already. Okay, let's have a look. 23 drones against 25 probes right now at the main base of Dimaga. He's throwing down his cybernetics core. Cybernetics core has been finished by now. And of course, the Protoss player could now either go for, uh, example, for a six gate attack, or he could just try to get some uh, attack up running, maybe get a Stargate. And uh, yep, here we go. Get that first Void Ray, to, which also helps out if the. Zerg player is trying to bust you with roaches, and then that void ray will be really, really important. And that's exactly what Dimaga is expecting right now. He will be expecting a void ray. At the same time, the Protoss player is getting his first stalker. And in his main base, we have one Overlord just trying to get a glimpse of what the Protoss player has been up to. But the Stalker will take it out fairly soon. At the same time, Dimaga, of course, using his larvae for drones. He's on a 30. On nearly 40, on nearly 40 drones now, getting additional six and double Stargate. He's not getting only one Stargate, he's getting two right away. So he's opening with a double Stargate against the Zerg play. He's not getting too many gateway units, as you can see. So he is pretty vulnerable at, against any incoming attack. But he's expecting that third base of the Maga, even though he can't see it just yet. And uh, in the main base of the Zerg player, we see another queen being built. So he will be, he will have three queens. He's uh, getting gas now as well, trying to make good use of his economy. He's on 44 drones, 46, 54, 54 drones uh, right now for the Zerg player. And his opponent is getting air upgrades. He's getting plus one attack upgrades for his air units. And the first two void raids are being built. So this will actually be quite annoying for Dimaga. White Ra is committing to that air play. He's getting a lot of void raids right now. And the Zerg player doesn't have any idea of what's happening. Dimaga is only aware of that expansion. He knows that his opponent is mining. But he doesn't know that he skipped gateway units altogether except for that zealot, uh, for that stalker that he didn't get any additional gateways at all that he's really committing to that airplay and did Dimaga see that did he s no he, he didn't even see the stargates he didn't see the stargates now now white ray is revealing that one white ray and that overlord is of course down in an instant and he's still getting air units. He's still getting air units. How many void rays does he have right now? He has three void rays. Two more are going to be built fairly soon. There's a spore crawler coming up for Dimaga. He already has his evolution chamber. He's getting the armor upgrade as well. He's on 53 drones right now. Four queens getting no anti-air units. He's not getting a Hydra Dan, he's only getting Spore Crawlers. He's only getting Spore Crawlers, that's all there is. We have the Metabolic Boost on his way as well. There's a Macro Hatch in the main base of the Zerg player. Another Spore Crawler being built. And here are four, 
four of those void rays. Additional void rays being built as well as phoenixes. And what is Dimaga doing right now? He's getting, he's getting queens. He's getting two of them. He realized that there, are way, that there are way more void rays than there should be. And of course, we also have additional spore crawlers being placed while as the uh, Protoss player is getting another nexus. He's getting a third base. And here come all those, all those void rays. Will it be enough? Will Dimaga's, Dimaga's force be enough to kill, to kill those Void Rays? There are five of them right now taking out that Spore Caller, charging up, and there are Phoenixes as well using the Graviton Beam against the Queens, and the Queens, they can't transfuse. All of them are in the air, they lack the energy as well. Three Queens are already down, and now the Protoss player is attacking. The Lair is trying to take out the structures of the of the Zerg player, and this is looking horrible for Dimaga right now. There are so many, so many Void Rays, and Phoenix is as well. Whitera committing to that airplay, taking out, taking out the Spore Crawlers one by one, annihilating the drones as well. The drones are being killed by the Zerg player, and what is Dimaga doing? He's just trying to get, in, to get a Spire, he's trying to get additional Spore Crawlers, but there is not much that he can do right now. He's losing all his tech structures, He's losing the spawning pool, he's losing the second hatch, and now the Roach Warren as well. Dimaga is helpless, helpless against that attack of White Rock. 53 to 53 probes right now, and he only has six queens. Well, not only, that's quite a lot actually. And uh, we have Mutalis coming, being built as well, but what are Mutalis supposed to do against all those Phoenixes? and of course the Void Rays itself. Here we go, the first queen. Are there any transfusers? He's lifting them off. The Mutalists are not in the game yet. The Mutalists are not there yet to help out the queens. There are just too many, too many Void Rays, too many of those Phoenixes, and now the Mutalists pop, but they get annihilated as well. Dimaga has to type GG, and Whitera wins game number two. Here we go, game number four, White Ra against the Magas, the StarCraft World IT King of the Hill, and we have game number four. On Shakura's Plateau, White Ra used one of his uh, special tactics. He just went for the double Stargate opening, well, not opening, but he opened with a hatch, uh, with a hatch first, no, with a Nexus first. Uh, White Rock opened with the Nexus first, just walled off with cannons, with one cannon to be exact, and then used double Stargate, went for that an for that airplay, committed himself um, to playing uh, Void Rays and Phoenixes. And Imaga, even though using two overlords to scout, even though running up the ramp with another Ling, he wasn't able to uh, scout those two Stargates and therefore didn't prepare um, adequately against that uh, attack of his opponent. He went for some spore crawlers and he used um, yeah the occasional queen. I think he had about three or four when White Rust attack hit him, but he didn't prepare for that many Void Rays and that many Phoenixes. Therefore just tried to get some anti-air units into the mix, getting a Spire, but the Mutalist that popped out in the end just weren't enough, uh, especially because the queens already had been taken out by the Void Rays. And that's one really, really dangerous thing if you are a Zerg player and uh, a lot of Phoenixes are attacking your base. Usually you want to use those Queens in order to, uh, to defend against airplay. You can transfuse your Queens and thereby heal them. But if there are too many, if there are just too many of those Phoenixes, they simply lift off your army and then there's nothing that you can really do. You can't transfuse your queens that are in the air and the void ray in this example just took out every single unit in the game every single anti-air unit after that focused on the spore crawlers and the lair and the game was over. Dimaga didn't scout it and therefore lost the game if he would have pushed with roaches and zerglings he would have won because Whitera yeah, he gambled a little bit. White Rover was playing really, really risky, really greedy. He only had one Stalker. He didn't have any additional gateway. He only had one gateway. That was about it. And one cannon. So Dimaga, well known for his macro style, uh, was an easy victim uh, to the Protoss player because he just made sure that he couldn't scout those two Stargates. But well, now we're on Crevasse and once again Dimaga is using that hatch first play that we already saw on Metalopolis. This time the Protoss player is not trying to use cannons in order to punish him for that. 
uh, because, uh, well, White Ra lost the Metalopolis and, and he scouted it. He didn't scout it in time. So he didn't know about it until the point where the pool already uh, was about to finish and therefore didn't use that uh, forge play again. Dimaga safe with his expansion and what is White Ra doing? White Ra already on double gas. The Overlord scouted the whole thing. He scouted everything. He scouted the main base and as you can see White Ra right now getting his uh, first Stalker trying to kill that Overlord. Doesn't even bother. He realizes that the Overlord will be away in time and uh, doesn't even bother to attack the flying supply depot of his opponent. So Dimaga is getting additional, he's getting additional queens right now. He's getting the metabolic boost and uh, for his opponent we already see the Twilight Council. This looks like DTs. This looks like another case of special tactics incoming. Let's have a look if that's going to work. Those CT rushes on one base are pretty powerful, especially if you mix them up with uh, Zealots after your opponent started to get detection. You can just morph the DTs into Archons and use Zealots as well to uh, just push your opponent. And this is a very, very strong push. You need Roaches against that or Spine Crawlers. Best both. But for now, we have the Dark Shrine coming up. There is one, yeah, one Stalker now just trying to escape because there are a lot of links, a lot of links following him. And he needs to be, well, he doesn't need to be all that careful because speed is only halfway done and there's just no way that the Maga Zerglings are going to catch up with the Stalker. At the same time, in the main base of the Protoss player, the Dark Shrine is already halfway done. There are three gates uh, so far and this might prove to be quite quite hard for the Zerg player to defend against. Let's have a look what the Maga is doing. Is th there's one sentry with a Stalker, the Structable. Uh, of course, they are now trying to defend the destructible rocks. And let's have a look in the main base of Dimaga. Dimaga is getting that evolution chamber. I'd say just in time. The Dark Shrine hasn't finished yet, so he will probably be able to get spore crawlers up in time. But he doesn't have any. He doesn't have a d uh, any unit that is able to deal with the uh, Archons. Uh, he's getting a spire right now, getting ten Zerglings. And at the same time, White Ra hi getting his Nexus up and running. If you remember one of the cups we've streamed lately, Elfie was playing that Dark Templar push and transition into Archon Zerglings and quite successful in doing so. He was able to beat a ton of... Uh, a ton of... Uh, opponents with that and now spine crawler nice block at the entrance very well played by the market it was just beautiful trying to save that queen not able to do so the spore crawler will maybe fall as well two additional queens are already coming there additional zerklings being produced for the for the Zerg player here, there's one Overseer in position as well. The first ET is down and the second and the third one will fall as well. There they are, all three of them already dead. Very well played by Dimaga. He blocked that entrance with the Zerglings and the Queen. Lost a few units, but still he was able to take out both of those both of those DTs and took out the third one that was following as well. And at the right hand side of the map we can see another expansion attempt by Dimaga. And what is White Ra doing? He is getting additional gateways right now. So he's not choosing to do that follow up with Archons and Zealot. Maybe, maybe he should have used it because we have Mutilists on their way for his opponent and there is not all too much anti-air for White Ra. He has those sentries, he has one stalker, but that's about it. And there are seven mutilists already. Seven mutilists are hitting White Ra's spade right now, hitting his base, hitting his probes, his economy, and he has to pull off the drones. He's losing a lot of drones, has to warp in additional anti-air units, but there aren't enough right now and White Ra is in a lot of trouble as Dimaga is getting additional Mutilus, is getting another base, spreading his creep and there are already, how many, how many are there? Nine, nine Mutilus on the map killing a lot of probes. Seven of them are already dead. Very well played by Dimaga. So far he's 20 supply ahead. The DT attack of White Ra 
was rendered useless. And there are more and more probes dying to the Harris of the Marga. And now he's trying to pick off sentries as well using one of the Mutalisks. But there are Zerklings trying to get into the main base and he would actually succeed in doing so. There is one Changeling scouting the whole thing. He knows about that wall in of his opponent, knows that, are, that there aren't enough units. And he's waiting. He's waiting for those Zerklings. White with a huge mistake at the entrance. And Dimaga keeping him busy with those Mutalisks, keeping him busy. And is he really able able to sneak into that base. Dimaga regrouping his zealots, but still, that's not a complete wall off. And here we go, the Zerglings just streaming into the main base of White Ra. Dimaga killing everything. His mutilists are able to take out the Zerglings. And now he can attack the army of his opponent with the Zerglings and mutilists. The Stalker Stone stand a chance against that attack. And White Ra, GG's, GG's, and leaves the game. We're going to see a fifth game once again. Well played by Dimaga, very, very well done. Party time, ladies and gentlemen, game number five. Woohoo! White Ra against Dimaga. It's the king of the Hill of Starcraft World IT. Once again, the winner takes a hundred euros and, of course, will participate in next week's King of the Hill. This game is going to be huge. The series is tight, it's two to two, and this game will decide who's going to be the victor. White Ra starting at the top position on Terminus at 12 o'clock and Imaga spawning cross position at 6 o'clock. Dimaga was able to take the last map and therefore tied the series, forcing a fifth game and White Ra really has to yeah, well, he uses special tactics if he wants to win against his Ukrainian buddy. We have a Zerg versus Protoss once again, and this is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to that. We have a nice map, and of course, the Maga can use his macro play on a map like this. Whitra is uh, at 100 APM right now, the Maga at roughly 300. So always funny to see how those APMs evolve during the course of the game. But now let's have a look at what White Rai is doing. He could go for that Forge first play once again. He could go for that Nexus first play as well. And he's placing down his Forge. I'm especially curious as to what Dimaga is going to do because on a map like that he could also try to get his hatchery up really fast, getting that hatch first play and he's already at 16 probes so he's probably going to do exactly that. He's already walking with his drone towards that expansion spot and yes, getting that hatch first and the, the um, forge of his opponent is nearly done. Will White Rod try to cannon rush him once again? Will he try to get cannons and kill that hatch? as he did on Metalopolis or will he just retreat with that probe now he's walking towards the mineral line and he has enough enough minerals to get one or two pollens he doesn't do it he's just retreating right now just trying to keep his opponent busy getting that nexus in his main base so he's expanding as well he's not placing down another gateway or another cannon at his wall of he's just getting that nexus as fast as possible in order to keep up with the Zerg player economy. We have 18 supply for both players and White Ra decided not to use cannons so he is relying on a standard play against Dimaga in the fifth game of the StarCraft World IT. King of the Hill, the spawning pool for the Zerg player is nearly done and as you can see we already have the gateway being built for White Ra. Gateway number one, there's one gas already on its way in the main base of the Protoss player and of course Dimaga is getting his queen. He's getting the queen, he's getting the Zerklings, not to take possession of the Xalnaga Watchtower to keep an eye on the Protoss player. He has one drone inside the main base of the Protoss as well already, so getting his scouting information, he knows about the expansion, knows that there is an Expo by Dwight Rael as well, a fast expansion. He's getting into the main base with that drone as well, knows about that uh, second assimilator, knows about the first one, and Dimaga immediately gets another hatchery. He knows about the Expo, and immediately tries to get a third base. Because as a Zerg player, always try to stay ahead with one base, always try to get the upper hand in economy so that you can build a lot of units, especially when your army is maxed. Usually the Zerg army is 
not as strong. Uh, a maxed out Zerg army is uh, usually not as strong as a maxed out Protoss army, uh, just because Protoss units, for example, are a lot more expensive as well and therefore a lot stronger as well. A Zerg strength lies in uh, just building as many units as possible, losing half the army and just rebuilding it as fast as you can. So you always need a lot of larva, you always need a good economy and that's what Dimaga is trying to do. Out macro his opponent and this is going to be quite a challenge. Out macroing White Ra is quite a task. As you can see we have the Stargate already being built and that's an Atorsus pylon right there. He should be careful about that later on if there's going to be an airplay by Dimaga. Maybe place a second one down because this pylon is powering way too many structures right now. We have uh, for White Ra another gas coming up. There are two Zerglings just at the entrance to his main base. Just uh, and an Overlord. No, a drone. The, the drone is still alive. We still have the drone in the main base of Timaga. I was under the assumption that White Ra already took care of that problem, but he didn't. So right now, Timaga knows about what's happening inside the main base and will obviously scout the expansion as well. While the Zerg player at the same time is getting additional queens, is getting his uh, third base up and running. Over Lords, of course, in order to not get supply blocked, and he's uh, scouting that expansion attempt as well. There's that drone, missed the, missed the Stargate though. Maybe he's going to scout it after all, but right now he knows about the expansion, and there's an Overlord in a position as well. So the Maga might want to uh, want to try to get another base might want to try to get a fourth base. He knows that there are not that many units in the main base of the Protoss player just about now. And of course, White Ra is once again getting that one that one Void Ray that we've been talking about. Not scouted by his opponent, and Dimaga is still on his way with the drone, still scouting what's happening, feeling pretty comfortable in his position. We have him on uh, 64 supply right now against 53. That's 62, 64, 67 worker supply against 46. But still keep in mind that for the uh, Zerg player, queens count as worker supply as well, so you have to um, subtract qu uh, quite an amount of worker supply. I think that's going to be about four queens, so eight supply. Three queens right now, that's eight supply, but we have 62 drones against 48 probes. And as you can see, White Ra is now trying to attack with those air units, but using one Stargate only this time. So we have one White Ray followed up by uh, two or three Phoenixes. And the fourth base of Dimaga is coming up. He scouted the third of his opponent, is trying to stay ahead with one base, trying to get that fourth base. And now the attack of White Ra is hitting the main base of the Zerg player. There's already one Macratch built by Dimaga. Like that quite a lot. What about the uh, Queens? Uh, the rest of the Queens is coming up, and that's is really, really slow. Off creep and that's one of the main reasons why you should always try to connect your bases with creep he didn't do that at all and now he might get punished for it as there are those two phoenixes lifting up the queen and the queen is already dead the second one will die as well there are four additional queens being built right now the evolution chamber is nearly done there will be spore crawlers and the hydra den is already being produced as well but the roach warren is going to fall victim to the void ray and this is not really comfortable for Dimaga. Dimaga trying to take out that Void but he has to retreat with the Queen and once again, once again, the Queen gets caught by the by the Graviton Beam and immediately being taken out. Now that Void Ray is killing one drone after another, the Roach Warrant being rebuilt, additional Queens being produced. There are three of them on their way already and Dimaga gets punished for not spreading his creep to his main base. Those Queens are just so immobile off creep. There is a fourth Queen right now and with four Queens and the Transfuse, he's now finally able to, uh, to re um, defend against this push of his opponent and take out, yes, take out that Void Ray. Take out that Void Ray, very well done. But of course, the Protoss player is aware of the fourth base now as well, lifting up the first drones. They are light armored, so the Phoenixes have an easy and easy game at just killing additional units. But the Spore Crawlers will be ready in a second or two, and he shouldn't be able to kill too many workers before they finish. Here we go, the first Hydralis are there as well, so now he's able to defend against the airplay of his opponent. Let's have a look at the numbers. Uh, we have 29 army supply for the Protoss player, 15 for the Zerg player, and he's still on 85 worker supply. There are a lot of queens out though, five queens, so that's 69 drones against 72 probes. Wydra is actually ahead <coughs> regarding the number of his uh, 
regarding the number of his workers, but in uh, the income we should see, yep, that the Marga has the superior income because he's mining of four bases instead of three and also has all those mineral patches at his uh, fourth base. The small expansion, keep that in mind, only has four or five patches, so Dimaga in a really good spot uh, regarding his economy. What's up with the Protoss player? He's getting additional upgrades. He already has the plus one attack upgrade. He's getting the plus two attack upgrade. If you're Protoss and you are going for that Colossus play, you should always focus on the attack upgrades in order to deal out a huge amount of damage to maximize your uh, capa uh, capabilities of dealing damage. If you stick to gateway units, uh, then you should even out the upgrades with armor upgrades and of course the attack upgrade. If you're facing a Terran player, then it's a little bit different as well. A lot of Protoss players actually um, yeah, try to get a lot of armor upgrades, especially if they play Zealot Heavy. Hazops is doing that, for instance. So, uh, yeah, it always depends on the strategy you play and on the opponents you face when you uh, think about which upgrades you should get first. But with the Colossus, it's usually all those attack upgrades first in order to deal out the maximum amount of damage. And here come the Phoenixes once again, trying to, trying to cripple the economy of Dimaga, taking out Queen number one, taking out Queen number two. There are no spore callers just yet. Will he be able? Yes, he's able to kill additional drones. He's killing drones left, right. Oh my god, 17 drones being killed already. Now he's taking out Overlords as well. Very well played by White Drop. Perfect timing for the Protoss player. Now he has to retreat with those Phoenixes, but hell they paid off. Yes, they did. And now he has to be careful. Maybe take out that queen as well. Yes, oh my god, this is just brutal to watch. The Maga is losing so many units, but the queen actually survives. The queen actually survives. Nevertheless, we have the Maga on 2,500 resources lost and his opponent at 1,100. Looking at the army supply, we see that the Maga is actually ahead. He is on 96 army supply against 83 right now. And his army is consisting out of a lot of roaches, a lot of roaches on 1-1 one, one upgrades right now. We have infestors, four of them, as well as zerglings and hydralisks. And now he's getting that neural parasite again. Remember Taldorim Altar, he tried a, di uh, a similar strategy. He was, uh, well, he was focusing a lot more on hydralisks in that game, but he also tried to use those infestors with neural parasite in order to counter the colossi, and he failed miserably. He didn't get into a good position with those infestors. He couldn't get a single neural parasite off, had to rely on fungal growth, and right now he's getting another base, a fifth base at the left side of the map, but Dimaga will have to face an attack of the Protoss player fairly soon as Vytra is moving out, is getting now the plus one armor upgrade, is already on plus two attack, and Neural Parasite is not done yet. Neural Parasite is not done yet. Dimaga's army is maxed. His opponent's Mamri as well. Vytra wants to end this game right now, and at the same time we have the Bailings. We have Bailings uh, with those over Lords, though this is going to be quite hard for the ter for the Protoss player to deal with if, the, if those bailings are dropped upon his army. But look at that number of Colossus. That's five, six Colossus right there. And I'm actually curious if Dimaga is able to pull that off. He's streaming in here with his army right now. Where are the Overlords? They are too slow. The Overlords are too slow. There are some fungals, but no Neural Parasite. Now the first two hit, and there are all those Phalanx and the Phalanx killing everything in their path. They hit too late, but they are still able to take out all those, all those gateway units. And the two Colossus that he used, that he got with his Neural Parasite, are helping him out lately as well. Very, very well played by Dimaga. He's getting additional Roaches and Zerglings right now. And White Rod just lost his entire army, although the timing of Dimaga was a little bit off. Of course, in an ideal world as a Zerg player, you want to hit your opponent with your ground units and the Baneling drops at the same time, but he was able to take that army out in the first seconds of the battle, White Rat dealing an awesome amount of damage, but then the Bailings hit, and of course those Infestors with a Neural Parasite as well. Very well played. White Rat now streaming in with additional units. He's get, he has Blink Stalkers, and he has, of course, another Colossus as well, but the Fungal Growth is dealing with the Blink Stalkers, and now White Rat just retreating with his army. He's in 100, uh, at 120 
supply right now against 200 once again he has a lot of spare minerals but not enough production capabilities we have another expansion for white rob being built another two of them to be exact and he's getting the plus three attack upgrade while the maga is moving in the maga is moving in 111 army supply against 65 trying to drop bailings once again and those colossus are in a lot of trouble the roaches are just walking in two armor upgrades already and now now he's just killing everything and anything. He's taking control over the one Colossus again with the Nova Parasite. And now the Gateway Army of Dimaga, uh, sorry, of Whitera is being killed by Dimaga. The Zerg player seems to be too strong for the Protoss to handle. Very well played by Dimaga. He might well be our next StarCraft role IT king of the hell. Dimaga with a beautiful game is getting additional upgrades right now. He's getting the plus three armor upgrade. He's getting the plus two attack upgrade for his Hydralis and Roaches as well as for the as for the Zerglings and the Atosis pile has been taken out it powered about five cannons and they all get demolished the Nexus is down as well we have the Mag on 200 supply against 100 by White Ra. after that beautiful Harris with its air units he just isn't able to deal with that amount of uh, units that Dimaga is throwing against him. There's another Atosis pile, and if he's able to kill that, then there won't be... Well, actually, it doesn't matter at all. He's just killing everything in his path, killing the Colossus left and right, taking out the whole base, rebuilding you every unit that falls. He's rebuilding it in an instant. He still is on 2,300 spare minerals, a lot of gas as well. And Wydra will lose this best of five. That's the GG! And Dimaga is the new StarCraft World IT King of the Hill. And we will be back, of course, next Thursday at 9.30 p.m. CEST. And then Dimaga has to face a different opponent. For now, he's the new King of the Hill. And Whitra, the special tactics didn't help. Whitra lost his second match in that series. Dimaga is the new champion.